I marked my calendar and today is the 10th anniversary of the uh, release of Mindways. The first version of Mindways was released 10 years ago and all it did back then was look at Minecraft voxels and output a, a 3D model that was a very simple, no colors, no textures or anything, but just a model that I could upload to Shapeways or Sculpteo or some other 3D print service. Um, it got fancier over a few weeks later I added colors and uh, started to add texturing and so on so that you could get these more elaborate 3D prints. And since then it's just evolved. It's And it still gets uh, 300 downloads a day so that makes me happy to continue to maintain it since there's people that are interested in using it. Um, I'd say about 99% of the users nowadays are doing more things like rendering in Blender for example. Um, so today basically I just wanted to go through a quick video of some tips and tricks that people don't seem to know about. Um, and uh, well the first one really is to Note that there's this page. <laughs> there's a lot of you know things you can go look at in this page. How to get in contact with me, you know, pictures, lots of documentation. Probably the easiest thing on this page is the fact that you can go down here and just click on whatever whatever you know digital content creation tool you use, and it'll immediately go to that uh, you know to that tool basically, um, and it'll give you a bunch of steps of how to use that tool. And, uh, and that's really about the, the main tip here. The other trick, by the way, is that you can always click on this one in the upper left, and it'll cycle through all the, uh, the pages of documentation, or the most important pages of documentation. So that's one way to sort of just quickly scan through the, uh, the documentation, if you want to do it that way. Anyway, let's, uh, let's show the program itself and some of the tricks there that I think people don't really quite know about. So. One thing that I just added, so a lot of people won't know about this one, is that you can now drag and drop your model. Like So I previously exported this model, and you can drag and drop models now right into Mindways, and it'll determine, oh, okay, that's what I want to do. You can also drag and drop worlds, uh, script files, all kinds of things. Anyway, try drag and dropping, and uh, hopefully you'll get what you want. Um, so anyway, that's one, one cool trick. If you just wanted to do it the old-fashioned way, you can also use import settings, which lets you go and choose a model in the same way. So these models basically get exported with a little extra data that tells Mindways uh, how to set things up. So anyway, so we now have this model. Um, one thing you probably know about is the fact that these, these sliders. So if you wanted to chop off the top of your model, maybe you have some junk hanging out in space you don't want to export, uh, you can do that by this top slider. Um, the bottom slider, because you're basically defining a big 3D chunk of, of uh, a big 3D box in space, right? Um, so the bottom slider is basically sort of sliding from the bottom up, so you can kind of see if it's not highlighted. So this stuff won't export because it's not this sort of pinkish color. Um, but anyway, you can also slide that up and down, right? Uh, so sometimes you slide that up and down, and it's, oh, uh, you know, what did I do? Okay, well, what you can do to get back to a, a reasonable level is click on what you think the lowest point is in your model. So in other words, I know this ground plane for this particular model is my lowest point. So I could just click there and uh, click, you know, on some spot. And what I do is I middle click. By middle clicking, it's telling me, you know, it's telling the uh, mine ways to go to that level. The other thing you can do is, you know, you can sort of try to carefully slide this, but it's a little bit touchy uh, to try to get exactly, you know, the, the level you want. So what you can also do is use the keys that are like the left bracket and the right bracket keys on your keyboard. So by just clicking, I'm now clicking the left bracket and it's slowly going up, um, I can click the right bracket and for each click it goes down a level. So that's another little cute trick. Um, so once you get your OBJ, I, I won't bother exporting these again, but once you get your OBJ, one other cool trick you can do is to use this G3D uh, asset viewer to actually view it. And with that viewer, I've modified it a bit so that it looks a bit better in, uh, with Minecraft. But anyway, it's a pretty cool viewer. And it's one I don't think people know much about. I don't see many downloads of it. And uh, it's it's pretty wonderful, actually, for just giving you a quick view of these OBJ files rather than, you know, having to go and take Blender and do a whole import kind of a thing. You just drag and drop your file in and you get these really pretty nice renders. They're, uh, you know, they're they're quite <laughs> quite nice. You can see some reflection mapping going on or some uh, environment mapping in the water, for example. So there's a bit of shininess to it and so on and so forth. It basically, you're getting these kind of cool you know, cool effects for, for free, essentially. Uh, you know, it's this nice free program that gives you the, 
you know, there's like some heavy inclusion there. You can actually see shadows being cast and so on and so forth. So cool program, free. Uh, look for it on the Mindway site for the download link. And um, anyway, that's that's my one other cool tip that people don't seem to know much about that. Um, OBJ is the format that I've been using for a decade and that I support. And it's because, you know, a lot of tools support it. Uh, Blender and, and all the rest, you know, they, they're all very much um, about OBJ. But there's a new format you should be aware of that's coming into play, and that's called USD. And USDA just means it's an ASCII file. It's a text file. So you can actually go into this file and look at, see what's sort of happening under the hood. And it's good for debugging and stuff. But basically, these USDA files uh, or USD files, they're developed by Pixar and it's meant for sort of the film industry and maybe the game industry and so on. And so there's a, another free program that's come out called Omniverse Create. And what you can do there is, you can, it's just drag and drop easy. You drop your... Um, your USDA file into there. It says loading. And now it takes a little bit of time because what it's doing is compiling a bunch of shaders. So it's it's thinking about things right now. <laughs> and it also is going to slow down enormously because it's fighting against uh, OBS Studio at this point. Um, in other words, I, I have, by having two processes going on right now, uh, I'm going a bit slower than uh, it normally would. But nonetheless, anyway, you can get in there and you know, once once all the uh, shaders are compiled and so on, you can get in there and see what's going on. And if you look closely, you'll notice, hey, wow, those those objects look pretty darn good. Like there seems to be all, all kinds of bump mapping going on here, and and other uh, you know cool stuff is happening. Basically, you can see some old school stuff that hasn't been replaced yet. But for the most part, a lot of these textures have been replaced um, by a person that came up with this uh, JG RTX texture pack, which adds a whole physically based rendering. Uh, set of uh, layers to every every object basically. So for example, you know, up here we have some shiny stuff. Uh, you can see this stuff in, and it's actually reflecting. You'll notice that what's happening here is I have a NVIDIA RTX card and I'm using the path trace mode. And so with the path trace mode what's happening is you actually get this nice, you know, real-time ray tracing, which is pretty awesome, I have to say. And so you're getting those are, you know, those are real reflections basically. Um, and uh, anyway, that's that's really my last tip as far as that goes, is that USD is really getting more and more uptake. Like, for example, Cinema 4D has it, uh, Houdini has it, um, and Blender will have uh, USD import sometime soon. It has export right now. Um, so keep an eye on this format. It's, it's really, you know, sort of the one I think I've been putting a lot of time into to try to support. And... Uh, you know, it's basically the, the way you export it, by the way, is just to go to export for rendering. And, um, you know, instead of uh, instead of doing an OBJ, you go export and you go da, 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 USDA, and it'll show you which ones you already have. And you just export like normal. You know, you pick a, pick a file and you export and you, you know, get the whole crazy dialog. And uh, it'll export all this stuff for you and you can just drag and drop it into, you know, like I say, Houdini, Cinema 4D, uh, Maya has a connector for it, um, and so on and so forth, and Blender, I think, soon will. So it's been an exciting 10 years for Mineways, and uh, and I'm looking forward to more excitement, really, is that the fact that there's USD and there's these more realistic materials that are just coming into, into use in uh, most of the major applications, uh, that's great. You know, it means we can do things like uh, use these more elaborate texture packs. So this texture pack is indeed the, the one right here. It's this... Uh, there's there's two versions. There's the 64 by 64 textures, and there's the higher res 256 by 256, which takes a little longer to export because they're larger textures. But anyway, these come with uh, come with Minecraft or Minecraft come with Mineways, and so you know consider taking a look at them and, and uh, trying them out. Anyway, that's about it for me. I, you know, I've uh, tried to show some of the cool features and some of the stuff that's coming up. Uh, with Mindways, and uh, and I look forward to your interest and support. And oh yeah, by the way, there's also a new Discord channel. So if you do have questions, I, I'm always happy to answer questions. So uh, just go there and ask questions there, or you can email me, or however you want to do it. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what cool stuff you all come up with in the future. Bye now.